Before we begin, let's go ahead and begin with a word of prayer. Heaven, thank you so much for this opportunity that you give us to come before you at this time. We ask that you please uh, be with each and every one of us in a special way. And I ask that you'd be with me as well. Father, help me to speak. Help me to get my thoughts right. Um, and I pray for each and every one uh, that is watching right now. I pray that you would be with each one in a very special way, Father. Whatever trials and afflictions that um, you might be going through, I pray, Father, that you would please be with them. Help them, Lord. And in any sicknesses, Lord, I pray that you would please instruct each one in your health laws that uh, we would be benefited benefited by them and uh, that we might have life and have it more abundantly and so dear father we pray that you would please forgive us our sins help us to overcome help us to get the victory through Christ through his invisible presence we pray father for that power even now and uh, we pray that you would please be with the live stream here um, that uh, these recordings would um, be blessed with with your protection lord that they would be a benefit to everyone that will be able to watch and even those that will watch at a later time and uh, we just pray father that your blessing would would be upon these recordings please uh, bless each one according to the faith that you have given and lord we ask that you'd be with the reading now Please help me to speak, help me to read correctly, and help me to pronounce the words all right. And uh, I pray for your grace, for your spirit, your Father. And uh, these things we ask in the blessed name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, welcome and good evening. We are going to pick up where we left off in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. Let us begin. And this is verses 13 and 14. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days. And they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and His kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. The scene here described is not the second advent of Christ to this earth, unless the Ancient of Days is on this earth, for it is a coming to the Ancient of Days. There there in the presence of the Ancient of Days, a kingdom, dominion, and glory are given him. The Son of Man receives his kingdom before his return to this earth. See Luke 19, 10 through 12 and onward. This is a scene, therefore, which transpires in the heavenly temple and is closely connected with that brought to view in verses 9 and 10. He receives the kingdom at the close of the priestly work in the sanctuary. In verses 9 and 10, if you remember, um, was where we read that the thrones were cast down, which actually means that they were set up. And... Um, 
this is where we saw the Ancient of Days did sit. I'll just read those verses to you really quick. It says in verses 9 and 10, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, which means set up, and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand and thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Okay, and so this is the time of the judgment. Um, and we just read uh, this scene, therefore, in verses 9 and 10. Excuse me. This is a scene, therefore, which transpires in the heavenly temple and closely connected, which that brought to view in verses 9 and 10. It's closely connected, but it's not the exact same time because we understand that in 1844 is when the first uh, event took place when the Ancient of Days and the um, Son of Man came to, uh, to the Ancient of Days. The judgment was set. This is the investigative judgment that has been taking place since then. And so here, he is already receiving the kingdom. And um, let's continue to read. He receives the, ki the kingdom at the close of his priestly work in the sanctuary, speaking of the uh, Son of Man. The people, nations, and languages that shall serve him are the nations of the saved. Revelation 21, verse 24. Not the wicked nations of the earth, for these are dashed in pieces at the second advent. Some out of all the nations, tribes, and kindreds of the earth will find themselves at last in the kingdom of God to serve Him there with joy and gladness forever and ever. Verses 15 through 18. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked, and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the, the things. And so this, this is Gabriel speaking to him. The angel Gabriel. These great beasts, which are four and four kings, which are four, are four kings, which shall ri arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. No less anxious should we be then was Daniel to understand the truth of all this and whenever we inquire with equal sincerity of heart we shall find the Lord no less ready now than in the, the days of the prophet to lead to a correct knowledge of these important truths the beast and the kingdoms which they represent have already been explained we have followed the prophet down through the course of events, even to the complete destruction of the fourth and last beast, the final subversion of all earthly governments. What next? Verse 18 tells us, The saints shall take the kingdom. The saints, those of all others held in low esteem in this world, despised, reproached, 
persecuted, cast out, those who were considered the least likely of all men ever to realize their hopes, these shall take the kingdom and possess it forever. The usurpation and misrule of the wicked shall come to an end. The forfeited inheritance shall be redeemed. Peace shall be restored to its distracted borders, and righteousness shall reign over all the fair expanse of the renovated earth. Verses 19 and 20. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, when was, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. Of the first three beasts of this series, Daniel had so clear an understanding that he had no trouble in reference to them, but he was astonished at this fourth, fourth beast, so unnatural and dreadful. For the, fur, for the further we came down the stream of time, the further it is necessary to depart from nature in forming symbols to represent accurately the degenerating government governments of this earth. The lion is a production of nature, but it must have the unnatural addition of two wings to represent the kingdom of Babylon. The bear we also find in nature, but as a symbol of Medo-Persia, an unnatural ferocity must be denoted by the insertion of three ribs into its mouth. So the leopard is a beast of nature, but fitly to represent Grisha, there is a departure from nature in respect to wings and the number of heads. But nature furnishes no symbol which can fitly illustrate the fourth kingdom. A beast, the likeness of which never was seen, is taken. A beast dreadful and terrible with nails of brass and teeth of iron so cruel, rapacious, and fierce, that from mere love of oppression it devoured, and break in pieces, and trampled its victims beneath its feet. Wonderful was all this to the prophet, but something still more wonderful appeared. A little horn came up, and true to the nature of the beast from which it sprang thrust aside three of its fellows, and lo, the horn had eyes, not the uncultivated eyes of a brute, but the keen, shrewd, intelligent eyes of a man. And stranger yet, it had a mouth, and with that mouth it uttered proud sayings and put forth preposterous and arrogant claims. No wonder the prophet made so special inquiry respecting this monster so unearthly in its instincts, and so fiendish in its works and ways. In the following verses, some specifications are given respecting the little horn, which enable the student of prophecy to make an application of this symbol without danger of mistake. Okay, so let's take a look at these verses to see um, what this, uh, these clear specifications show. Verses 21 and 22. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came 
and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. The wonderful wrath of this little horn against the saints particularly attracted the attention of Daniel. The rise of the ten horns, or the division of Rome into ten kingdoms between the years A.D. 351 and 483, has already been noticed. See on chapter 241. This is in the image um, that Nebuchadnezzar had dreamed. As these horns denote kingdoms, the little horn must denote a kingdom also, but not of the same nature, because it was di diverse from the others. They were political kingdoms, and now we have but to inquire if any kingdom has arisen among the ten kingdoms of the Roman Empire since A.D. 43, and yet diverse from them all. And if so, what one? The answer is, yes, the spiritual kingdom of the papacy. This answers to the symbol in every particular, as is easily proved, and nothing else will do it. See the specifications more particularly mentioned on verse 23. Daniel beheld this horn making war upon the saints. Has such a war been waged by the papacy? Fitly, uh, excuse me, 50 million martyrs with a voice like the sound of many waters answer yes. Witness the cruel persecutions of the Waldenses, the Albigenses, and Protestants in general by the papal power. It is stated on good authority that the persecutions, massacres, and religious wars excited by the Church and Bishop of Rome have occasioned the shedding of far more blood of the saints of the Most High than all the enmity, hostility, and persecutions of professed heathens from the foundation of the world. In verse 22, three consecutive events seem to be brought to view. Daniel, looking onward from that from the time when the little horn was in the height of its power to the full and of the long contest between the saints and Satan with all his agents notes three prominent events that stand as mileposts along the way or landmarks. The coming of the Ancient of Days, that is, the position which Jehovah takes in the opening of the judgment scene described in verses 9 and 10. Number two, the judgment that, that is given to the saints, that is, the time when the saints sit with Christ in judgment a thousand years following the first resurrection. Revelation 20, verses 1 through 4. Apportioning to the wicked the punishment due to their sins. Then the martyrs will sit in judgment upon the great anti-Christian persecuting power, which in the days of their trial hunted them like beasts of the desert and poured out their blood like water. Number three, the time that the saints possessed the kingdom, that is, the time of their entrance upon the possession of the new earth. Then the, the last vestige of the curse of sin and sinners root and branch will have been wiped away and the territory so long misruled by the wicked powers of earth the enemies of God's people will be taken by the righteous to be held by them forever and ever 1 Corinthians 6 2 and 3 and Matthew 25 34 Okay, we're going to go ahead and stop there. We're going to stop on verse 23. 
and uh, it's getting more and more interesting as we get a very close look at this fourth beast um, in particular the little horn that comes up among uh, the ten horns and actually plucks up the three uh, this has much to do with uh, some history and it very clearly shows us who this power is none other than that Roman power the papacy uh, and so let us go ahead and end with a word of prayer father in heaven we want to thank you so much once again for allowing us to come together at this time we ask that you would please continue to be with us and we thank you so much lord for taking care of us and for allowing this light to shine upon us that none need to uh, have a mistake about it you wish to plainly show us these things in regards to the prophecies that, that even a child can understand. And so, Father, we thank you so much for this book. We thank you for blessing us with light. And um, your word says that your beloved son is like the sun that uh, with its rays heals um, our infirmities and father we are sick we we uh, are in need of healing and so we ask that you would please be with us and help us to um, overcome the sick the sickness which is sin and we pray that you would give us power to do so, Father. We, we're not able to do it on our own. We need that um, power from on high, the Holy Spirit, to guide us and to lead us. And uh, that he might dwell within us, which is Christ. And so, Father, we thank you so much for all that you do and for revealing these things to us. Help us to appreciate these things. Help us to to uh, to share these things as well with those that are in need. And so we pray that as uh, this video is recorded, we pray for those that will be able to watch it and learn from it, dear Father. And I ask that you would please blot out our transgressions, blot out my sins, dear Father. And all of those that believe upon your Son, we pray, Father. And we thank you for his work in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary where he is doing the work of blotting out sins. And help us, dear Father, to uh, continue to press forward as... Uh, Things will only get more difficult as uh, time continues to run out. And so we thank you and we ask all of these things. In the blessed name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.